Okay, good morning and uh, let's begin this new chapter about uh, evaluation. Hmm? So as we already uh, said yesterday, we are on uh, starting to work uh, on the right hand uh, pillar of, of this picture. Okay, so once uh, we have some design, so for example, the uh, prototype that you are developing or you, you will work on in, uh, in tomorrow's lab, uh, uh, the question is always uh, uh, why uh, after I followed all the guidelines or the principles at the best that I can uh, is the result good or not hmm? so we'll try to reread in a way uh, the principles not just as the design criteria as we did now but as an evaluation criteria hmm? and especially we'll try to devise a methodology or to study methodology for uh, doing this kind of evaluation in an objective way which it we can be done by um, say external reviewers and not by the same designers mm -hmm. there are different uh, ways on the right side of this slide uh, to evaluate the, the design that we generated okay so of course uh, uh, there are the real evaluation methods that involve users so we can do some usability testing with real users or we'll see these two will uh, these two aspects will be seen later in the course uh, or some controlled experiments where we uh, want to evaluate the details of a specific choice uh, for example a button a bit uh, uh, um, the position of the button the, the label of a, of, a, of a menu and so on and so you know you really want to to measure the performance the error rate and so on of a specific aspect um, uh, these two are say heavy heavyweight tools uh, uh, that gives us uh, uh, a lot of information from the users themselves directly but there are also uh, some say uh, uh, easier or cheaper um, versions of evaluation techniques uh, that just involve some experts that are not the real users but are, have enough knowledge uh, to be able to evaluate to find uh, many i wouldn't say most because we don't know the actual numbers but many of the usability problems without uh, involving complex setups and very uh, expensive setups for user testing hmm? so the idea is uh, the evaluation hmm? i we have an interactive system or a prototype of it uh, and we want to test uh, usability functionality accept acceptability all these qualities that we've been talking about hmm? uh, evaluating a, a prototype or a system of course the the scope evaluation depends uh, of evaluation depends on the stage of the design so if you have just a prototype if you have just a sketch you can evaluate some aspects uh, which are different from those that we, you can evaluate when you have a, a final version or an advanced prototype for example mm -hmm. so uh, uh, as always uh, we should first understand at which stage of the design we are in and uh, set the goal of the evaluation to be aligned uh, with the uh, with the development uh, of, of the prototype or development of, of the system um, and uh, we should keep in mind all the usability dimensions so we saw that usability is a complex uh, uh, um, landscape uh, with many many aspects so we should uh, be careful not to forget some points of view hmm? so that's why the methodology helps uh, it's not just uh, okay let's have a look uh, at the interface and tell me what you think mm -hmm. but uh, having some criteria some method for extracting some criteria uh, there are different techniques uh, we'll see both of the, a couple of them a couple of techniques one very very quickly and the other one will be you know, the main focus uh, of this stage uh, so the goal finally also is to identify the problems but also having some information to uh, correct these problems so uh, from the evaluation process uh, we should also also have some suggestions on how to correct the problem not just uh, it's not just like you know um, like where you are doing automatic unit testing at the end you have a report with a set of failed uh, tests and okay these are failed but you don't know why you know how to correct them it's all upon you as a designer to understand the meaning of a failure okay, in these processes since we have involving users and experts uh, uh, the evaluation process itself will also give suggestions for corrections hmm, which is good evaluation in general no? oh, it's a, a wide field so like design is a wide field uh, evaluation can be imagined in a lab so the easiest uh, version so we in a lab we set up uh, 
a paper prototype, uh, uh, um, uh, visual uh, prototype, an interactive one, or whatever. We, we invite some experts or we invite some users and we do the experiments there. Or maybe we try to modify the lab uh, in order to mimic more carefully the environment in which the real application should be, should be deployed. Or it could be some evaluation in the field. So we give some item to users and they will bring the application with them, try to use them in their real life, and we gather information from those. Of course, this may be done when the prototype is, ad is advanced or we already have a better version, version or we are testing new functionality for a new version, so we can test them in, in the wild. So with much larger numbers of, of users hmm, that, that can be re uh, with respect to what we can do in lab setting. Hmm. For now, we are, think we are thinking about uh, a lab evaluation, so in a, in a control space uh, without involving huge number of users. We can uh, do uh, evaluation involving users or based uh, on experts. So there are the two main, uh, let's say, streams. On one hand, uh, the real evaluation, the empirical evaluation is, okay, we have a prototype or we have the final system, let's involve users and observe users, how they use it and measure how they use it and so on. Uh, so um, there can be different methods. Uh, we'll come to, to some of them uh, in, uh, in, in four weeks uh, or, or so uh, for doing this kind of uh, uh, evaluation with users. So we already saw some observation. Uh, up to now, the observation we did was mainly uh, for requirement analysis. And uh, later on, we will observe the users to check how they are using so usability analysis how they are using the interfaces that we prepared in the meantime so uh, or maybe we can ask them to perform some experiment to execute some tasks we measure their errors we measure their time and so on so there are some methods for working with users hmm, in order to extract information about uh, whether the uh, prototype or the system is uh, usable or not and why or we start we will start from uh, the expert evaluation stream where there are methods for extracting information, evaluation, uh, from the evaluation point of view, uh, by using some experts which are not real users. So we'll, it's a second level evaluation, it's not the real truth. The real truth is only in the user's mind. But the experts can help us, especially if they are independent, if they're not the same persons who develop the system can help us understanding uh, possible issues, possible problems. Hmm? There are, uh, again, um, se several methods. Uh, in this case, we will focus more on the heuristic evaluation based on experts. Hmm? Uh, heuristic means uh, based on a set of rules uh, that should be followed, uh, should be checked uh, on our design. There are also a small field, uh, which is growing, by the way, of about uh, automated evaluation. And automated evaluation means software tools that try to interact or navigate uh, uh, with the system or with a prototype and try to detect uh, uh, violations uh, of some usability rules. So of course they will not catch everything because they are not intelligent, but maybe some low level rules uh, uh, can, be, uh, can be detected automatically. So whether all the images have a sufficient contrast, contrast color, for example, uh, if the text has a sufficient size, uh, uh, if there are no overlaps with the text or with different graphical elements and so on, uh, all of these can be, uh, you know, um, in, in part uh, um, automated by a software tool. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I would for first uh, uh, present you two slides, only two, uh, about a technique which is, which is very easy. At you can do it yourself when designing an interface. No? The name is very strong sound cognitive walk through but actually that it amounts uh, to uh, revising each step of an interaction to check whether this step uh, uh, has been you know, designed correctly and trying to preview what the user could have in mind when executing that step so it's actually a i would call it a sanity check okay i you have your design, you know that the, at the given point, uh, the user can select uh, three different functionalities or can insert some data or can cancel some action. So you know what the user can do. And so you have 
the, the, the different steps that the user should follow to get to the to the end of the task right uh, for each step uh, we will ask ourselves some questions uh, so imagine you have a prototype or a system and especially you have the rule the specification so you know what the system should do and you know what the user should be able to do you know the task so the system should be able to allow the user uh, you know to fix a, a date with a friend and the task will be creating a new date or the finding a selection or whatever the, the specific task uh, is and so we know as designers we know what are the steps the actions that the user should do in sequence for reaching the goal this we know all this we know because we have designed it huh? it's our design um, of course we we also know who the users are whether they're experts or not uh, whether they are in a hurry they are in a in a, um, in a quiet environment or whatever so we are we already all know all of this because it's the information that we use for design and then like no you go write some code before running before debugging let's go through and say okay did they write all the documentation did they do all the checks for null pointers did they uh, check any error so in your code you check that every for example every function or, re or every class definition has some characteristic that make it usable in software engineering the same goes here imagine all the steps that you imagine your users will do and for each step you ask yourself four questions is the effect of the action the same as the user's goal at that point what does it mean imagine a user seeing a button or a label what's in the mind what would come in the mind of the user when they read that button if the button is cancelled what do they think if the button is save if it's abort if it's uh, continue so every action uh, that the the, mm, the system provides is interpreted by the user in some way through his own mental model so uh, the cancel button should cancel the action so does the real action carried on by the system is uh, is it equal to what the user would preview would imagine the action would do hmm? so uh, you know what the system does when the user clicks that button but ask yourself what the user what would what would the user think about that button hmm? um, second question will the user see that the action is available visibility we you know that at that point uh, the users may choose that action should choose that action that, that button that labeled link okay uh, is it in a good place for being seen for being detected for being uh, understood by the users hmm? or the next the action for the next step is not visible in the output from the previous step you know that the user should be do step one two three so the output of, of one should lead the user to see that the next step will be two and don't go back and search for the next step somewhere else it's strange what, what, what is he saying uh, usually if we have a procedure with three steps uh, we are accustomed to have different screens with a continue or next button that leads us from one to the next to the next one okay this is the, the result this is a good usability technique but in many cases it's not like this you need to, co to complete a procedure here and then to go to another page completely different to perform the next step imagine how many bureaucratic procedures you did uh, when you need to you know insert uh, you just mm, okay when you graduated a couple of years ago you have to do all the documents for the graduation 
so the domanda di laurea and stuff like that and then you went you had to go to the alma laurea questionnaires and so so there are different websites uh, you have to follow a, li a list of instruction and at every stage you you don't you don't know where you were in this sequence and there was nothing that would lead you easily from step one to step two to step three you saw everything on your own the system will not let you see what's the next step hmm? and uh, if i found the correct action or if i see one or more possible actions will the users understand which one is the correct one so after step two you could have step 3a 3b 3c 3c different alternatives in the task that you are designing the correct alternative will be step 3b okay but for the different steps there will be different pieces of the user interfaces that the user can see and so at that point will the user be able to select easily to understand easily which is the correct next action to select so is it there and is it easy to distinguish the right choice from the other choices in the same context in the same moment you see there are easy questions but all of them are of the type uh, what would the user do at this point what would the user think at this point and if we sit down we, we probably can understand it uh, especially if you are focusing one page at a time so we don't have all the background information of what the system is doing i know that the system will we do that uh, slow down in this screen what do we want the user to do and will the user understand it find it and uh, select the right one the correct one and after the user selected the, the button something happens so the system should we already know from the principle should always give some feedback so will the feedback be understood by the user if the user clicks cancel and then the feedback is okay okay what did, did you cancel or okay did you save hmm? maybe it's a feedback that will tell something but the user has difficulty in relating that feedback with the intended actions so we are back to square one with the intended action that the user wanted to do so it's forming an intention uh, seeing the element interpreting the element and understanding the, the results so we are back to the normal model eh? always because of the feed the the, the the cycle is always the same but these are four simple questions that you can ask screen by screen to yourself and if there's something missing you just have to correct it it's, uh, it's very easy it's a uh, it's not a very there are, uh, it's not the most powerful method but it's one of the simplest ones and you don't need external experts you just can do it uh, by yourself okay the question is uh, the, the issue is uh, trying to think as your user would think so the observation phase and understanding of the user comes as an important ingredient here at this stage so this is a very simple way if we want to do more deeper let's say analysis uh, or to extract more information or to find more problems uh, we could work uh, with this heuristic evaluation method that uh, employs a panel of uh, experts uh, looking to our system so playing with our prototypes or playing with our preliminary versions um, of the system and uh, it's called the heuristic evaluation because it uses a set of criteria that are called heuristics um, it's a form so heuristic evaluation is a form of design critique now design critique is something uh, is a wider uh, methodology a wider uh, uh, set of te techniques uh, in which some experts in some way uh, aim at giving feedback no, don't uh, take critique in the negative sense uh, it's mainly giving informed feedback uh, about uh, it's not generic feedback i like it or i don't like it but a critique is some informed feedback that goes to the point is more specific more precise and why do we do that why can can we just have to test uh, with users uh, basically to to find easy problems without much effort it's easier to put together three experts and uh, let them work uh, half an hour on our prototype than to organize a test with 10 users and probably most of the easy problems can be found very quickly by our let's say experts and so we can save uh, the user testing uh, 
for a second stage when the easy problems have already been fixed have already been found and corrected so it's something that we we can do in-house basically um, and we can find and i do some iterations of the design find problems correct them and so on so when we are confident with them we we cannot find any more problems let's go to the users they will find more but at that point we already we, we don't uh, say if you have a stupid usability problem we don't wa want to waste our users to find a stupid problem because they will maybe be blocked by problem number one and so they will not discover problem number six seven eight nine which are with that, that are more hidden or less prominent for them and so you're wasting one user study that costs time and effort for finding something that you could, could have found yourself with the much cheaper method hmm? and uh, so that's what the, the main the main reason uh, another uh, reason why we are trying to do this uh, is uh, if we want to redesign a part of the system so let's imagine that some functionality is broken is bad and uh, uh, we we, we understand we, we, we cannot just fix details. We need to redesign it. But some part of it are good. So how can we separate the good parts of the design from the bad ones? This is one easy way. Let's do an expert analysis, and so they will find which parts have a criticality. So we throw them away, and we design, redesign them from scratch. But the good ones don't need to be modified. Hmm? Or, <laughs> this is another let's say management reason you know that something is wrong you know that something must be, co must be corrected you understand you, you are trying it yourself it's not good you tell your boss he will say everything is fine not don't spend time in changing that because i think it's okay you know bosses always think think the truth hmm? uh, so you need evidence that you are right that there are there are indeed problems so in this way but you don't want to waste a lot of time or money just for getting this piece of evidence that maybe you already know so this is another way of doing a quick expert check uh, and saving uh, um, having a report that says okay there are actually problems bonus point maybe you you can find other problems that you didn't know at that time hmm? okay so these are different moments uh, in the life cycle when we could apply this kind of techniques and so we will adopt uh, and from what i'm seeing everybody is following the lines of uh, jacob nielsen this person a bit creepy um it's a, a dane come, it comes from Den denmark now he works in the united states uh, in the nielsen normal norman group so there's this Jacob Nielsen and uh, Dan Don Norman, not that you already knew, uh, that are the two, uh, say, most uh, important experts in this, in this field. They're working together in a company, uh, which is the Nielsen Norman Group. And in 1994, so it's quite a long time, the Nielsen developed uh, a set of uh, uh, this methodology that we, we, today we call heuristic evaluation. And the motivation at that time was that, they do, uh, okay, 1994, it's... Uh, okay i don't count them 25 uh, years ago and uh, at that mo at that time the problem is uh, letting industries companies understand the importance of usability okay 1992 four we had the first version of netscape navigator uh, you don't remember it the first static website there was no javascript was invented in 92 so there was no dynamic behavior or not so it was very very at, uh, at the early beginnings most of uh internet didn't, didn't exist most of the application for business were just terminal application with terminal emulators or console applications and so on so all the idea of usability was hard to accept especially uh, there was this uh, background conception, the background idea, wrong idea, that uh, usability was expensive. Okay, you are asking me to do uh, user studies and to bring users here and to spend one month uh, 
uh, with the users talking making reports and so on it costs a lot what benefit does it bring to me and uh, nielsen devised this uh, they, they call this discount usability so i show you that you can achieve a good usability also at a discount price so without all the effort of of full fledged uh, full uh, full scale hmm? uh usability testing method so this was one of the first experts that say the first uh, researchers that proposed uh, having different techniques for different uh, stages of the design so uh, heuristic evaluation is a design critique technique uh, it was very easy use a, a simple and general heuristic we'll see 10 rules 10 heuristics that are in a way uh, similar to the principles involves but just a, a small group a small group of experts for a couple of hours so you know four people for two hours we can do that huh? it's just a uh, half a day and it's uh, suitable for any state of design uh, from initial sketches to the final user interface so the idea is uh, and you find all the information in these links that uh, uh, i provided in the slides uh, we are trying here to summarize them but all the information is taken from this article and of course all the follow-up work work that, that they made um, first of all uh, imagine you have a set of rules rules written in a way that they are easy to check hmm? not just to inspire you but there are something more uh, concrete and you give these rules to a set of experts these rules could be we call them heuristics uh, could be the 10 rules the 10 heuristics that Nielsen is proposing or you could uh, add someone or you could remove someone because it doesn't apply you can you can customize them a bit if you want if you need if you if there's something with your design which is specifically interesting you can add some rules at the end you have a list of 10 12 whatever rules you give them to a group of experts each expert will use these rules to check for problems in your design so the design the rules let's check it every expert will work independently so you have three experts you put them in three different rooms and at the end every expert which would needs to tell you which rules have been violated in which parts of your design since the experts work uh, independently and separately they will find different problems and we see how this is important in a moment at the end once the each of them found some problems they join together or at least let's put together we need to put together all their feedback we can put together it by ourselves or if you are lucky that the the experts are in the same time at the same pl place we could also put together the experts and discuss uh, all together with them and sometimes you can do that because the experts are there and sometimes you are they are far away or they work at different times uh, in different days so you, you don't have the luxury of having all of them together at the same time so you need to do the background work your, yourself hmm? but at the end you need to, to aggregate all this information into some actionable information and this actionable information is a set of violations to the heuristics and so the reason why they are violated and uh, suggesting on how to correct them um okay this is something that we already said let's skip it so basically the heuristic evaluation is a process in four main stages four pre-evaluation training evaluation severity rating and debriefing uh state step one pre-evaluation training you have the experts and the experts are supposed to evaluate a given system that's a pro uh, imagine a pro an interactive prototype so you put them in front of a screen where there's a fake html uh, website or a paper prototype you put them in a paper prototype with somebody who's playing the computer to animate the prototype if this application is a generic application doesn't need any prior knowledge the experts could start right away if it's something something for i don't know uh, buying a train ticket everybody knows what was the meaning of buying a train ticket so the experts can start working on the system with their e uh, existing background but 
if your system is something for i don't know regulating the air traffic control in the airport uh, you should first uh, teach your experts what does it mean what are the problems what are the issues you could give the, you should give them the same amount the same type of, st of training that you would give uh, to a, a new person work doing starting that work uh, you, the experts should uh, have the same or similar domain knowledge as uh, users so if the domain if there is no specific domain knowledge required by your application you don't need this stage if there is uh, a specific domain knowledge you need to bring uh, the the evaluators uh, up to speed uh, with that information so that they can understand what the system does and not just click randomly this probably a critical step for some specific applications second the evaluation itself so with that information with that training and the system and the guidelines the evaluators do their work so this is why we'll go into more details about how this happens here at the end of the work they will they will have a, a list of issues and they need to rate all these issues according to a severity scale this is a more severe than this other problem which is less severe and so in a way that you we need not just a long list of issues but also the priority of them in order to start uh, uh, to to understand where to start from because if you have a long list the only the, the first uh, uh, impression would be to run away okay oh so there are too many problems no no okay there are many problems but some are easy to fix uh, some are important so let's let's focus on the important ones and then on the easy to fix uh, ones and then we are uh, on the middle uh, another set of problems that we'll we will consider in a second iteration maybe okay so we need to have this uh, importance rating severity rating by individual evaluator and then we need to put together all the priorities suggested by different evaluators into one consensus report and if possible we have the debriefing stage where we analyze all these uh, uh, violations and their severity and try to turn them into suggestions for the design you can do that uh, inside the design team so the designers read the reports and try to discuss how to correct the, the issues if possible you can try to involve also the evaluator in this de debriefing it depends on the whether you can or not at the end you will have here a new set of requirements <laughs> for change your design okay so let's focus on some of these aspects first one evaluation so this is the instruction that you would give to the external evaluators uh, define which tasks the evaluators should analyze so they're not ex uh, expected to go randomly on the prototype but you declare which user tasks uh, they would simulate they would analyze for every task uh, the suggestion is that the evaluator should go through the design or through the steps in the design more than once and uh, usually they say at the first step you just go through all the steps I, as a normal user would would do without thinking too much just by using the system using the paper prototype or the interactive prototype whatever you have and then so that you have a general feeling of where you're going to finish and how and then you start again from the beginning a second time or maybe even a third depends on the complexity or depends on how many problems you find along the way and in the second stage uh, the expert will specific on the different user interface elements and try to uh, understand uh, whether there are any issues with them but they already have the, the general picture so in the first stage uh, they gather all the information about how the system is working in general so that that would not be a problem in the second iteration they don't need to ask themselves what what, what does it lead to they already know and so they are able to focus more on the how does it lead you well in a usable well way hmm? of course if the first uh, step fails uh, it's a bit of a problem so if the, if the experts cannot execute the task uh, you have a bigger problem because you didn't test it yourself hmm? it should be something that at least an expert should be able to, to follow so it 
th there may be some failures, but usually, usually we, we will find them ourselves when, when we do our, our, our checks, mm -hmm. our internal checks. And the heuristics uh, are just a list of issues that help the experts uh, consider all the aspects not they so that they, they don't forget to look at some so uh, some some issue just a checklist okay did you think about this did you remember to check that okay but if a, uh, an evaluator finds another problem another type of problem which is not listed in the heuristics okay of course they can report it so it's not a closed list it's a list of suggestions it's easier to have this uh, list of heuristics because then you can explain what you found uh, with a common dictionary one game that i hope uh, we're able to, to do that next, next week is have a, to have a look at your uh, hall of fame or hall of shame uh, uh, screenshot that you submitted in the first uh, class so at that at this stage it's interesting to bring them out of the of the drawer and have a look at them and trying to uh, check what you wrote at the beginning of the course you you wrote a comment I, I think this is bad because okay I read those comments uh, and you you caught something huh? but it's very difficult to explain to another you found it difficult to to write in words uh, what is wrong okay and so maybe different people agree or not uh, or they see different aspects it's not very easy to, to see right now we'll have a methodology to redo that check uh, with a common understanding it will be much easier to give a name to the type of problem okay uh, let me show an example that uh, i just uh, found uh, where is it i don't remember where i put it is it not here uh, yeah okay sorry i just saved in the wrong place Okay, just uh, this is a page from Eureka Knight Polytechnico, probably. Okay, this is a page from our, uh, you can find thousands of those, okay, from our uh, apply website. And in particular, yeah, Project Orientamento is for people coming. Uh, wanted to enroll next year so people from the fifth year of the of the um, of the college huh? okay the and you see this strange pattern down here there's something uncomfortable but can we explain it so there's uh, you have some questions for a lot of text there well you need to read it understand it's heavy but uh, back continue and forward okay i could give you back but continuing forward what do they do remember the four questions that we had before will the actions executed by the system be the same action that the user has in mind who knows <laughs> i don't i don't have any idea about what these two that do uh, the two buttons do i can see them so the second criteria is met but i cannot uh, select the right one because i don't know which is which okay so right now we st we start uh, the, the feeling of being of something being wrong we can analyze it better and give reasons and uh, list which guidelines have been violated and so on also the alignment uh, is, is quite obscured so why do you have this kind of alignment okay i won't tell you what happens no, I will tell you. This continue means pay now. So uh, you have to pay 55 euros. If you want to pay now, you click on continue. Intuitive, no? And uh, next goes forward so you can pay later. Okay? So pay now and pay later would have been a bad choice probably not in the mind of the person who developed this form hmm? and so with this example other example in mind uh, let's check uh, uh, the the work you now the of the server so you have a feeling and then you try to check this feeling with a set of rules hmm? so that you can explain it better um, 
the evaluators will do comments and uh, will interact with the system and if possible you should at least observe the evaluator listen to what they're doing see what they are doing maybe take notes or record them if possible mm. again everything depends on the, the, the the location of the people whether they're doing the working remote or they come to your lab and so on but uh, uh, you can gather all, all not just the information from the report that the observer is the so the evaluator is going to to write but also by interacting with the evaluator an observer that can ask clarifications or can give more information maybe to the evaluator especially about the domain okay the, the evaluator maybe is not an expert on the specific, uh, you know, uh, flight control domain. So you have, it, it has some initial training, but maybe something, doesn't understand something specifically. And so you can provide them information, not information about the interface. You're not telling them, click on this button. You're telling them, okay, you should consider that the runway is longer than that, uh, than this kind of plane doesn't apply. I don't know. So you can give them information that will help them to, uh, to understand the problem, not understand the interface understand the interface should be the job of the evaluator or better should be the job of the interface to be easy to understand so these are about to work with the, assi the assistant of an server and uh, can that can interact and take info uh, take notes uh, imagine a, a session duration of one or two hours so they shouldn't be shouldn't be much longer each evaluator provides a list of usability problems and this list will contain the heuristic that has been violated and why hmm? so the why should not be a personal comment i don't like it but possibly a reference to a principle so why is this violated because the visibility principle doesn't apply because it's not consistent so we know we talk about consistency so we call that visibility we talk about error prevention we talk about you know a lot of discussion we had about the principles so now we have the words to express what is wrong and try to refer to do these principles and uh, so the, the experts should try to refer to these principles and uh, report each problem separately a, a list of many independent or as much as possible independent issues because you, you will need to go to through this list uh, in the next step and uh, what the evaluator would will uh, will find that well, depends but they may find find some problems in some specific spot of the user interface this button is difficult to press the search box is difficult to find the feedback uh, uh, of this uh, action is not uh, clear enough or that uh, button press uh, doesn't have any feedback so there will be a localized uh, violation we, with that user interface element with that user action some problem i found some problem or it could be the comparison this especially applies to consistency the comparison of different elements or so the different same uh, object called with different names different objects called with the same name lack of consistency between the same action or the same concept in different pages on different parts of the website and so on so not just a single element a each of them would not be bad by itself but in comparison with the other the, the two don't fit together hmm? or problems with the overall structure so the menu disappears when you don't want it when you when you should when you would need it uh, or it, it appears or disappears with no clear rule and so there's something wrong with the interaction uh, in a wider sense not with a specific element but uh, with the overall layout or something is hidden or uh, hmm? or the, you, there's no way of going back uh, to the previous step so it's uh, something about the navigation so it's not about the, the, the individual control or the individual widget or something is missed something's missing so the user were expecting to see something and he didn't find it okay this can be a real problem so actually there is no cancel button there is no back action in a form so this is wrong this is a problem or maybe something is missing because the prototype is not the final version so for making a quick pro prototype we left out some elements 
I don't know, all the menu items, we don't list all of them, only some of them. And so the, the evaluator was thinking, but I didn't find the help section, for example. Oh, yes, because we didn't put it in the prototype at this stage. So in a way, it's normal. <laughs> no? We knew that it was missing. It's not missing from our design. It's just missing from our prototype. Or maybe something that we are planning for the next iteration. So right now we are not implementing that functionality yet. In the general picture, it should be there. But at this stage, in this version number one, we decided to leave it out. So in these two cases, we should inform the evaluators beforehand. Please consider that the prototype is still incomplete. There are some missing functionalities. And even in the existing functionality, we just left out from the prototype some some details, some aspects. So if they know th that these parts are, are in the gray zone, they don't need to be looked at, they will focus on the others. Otherwise, you are risking to, to draw the attention on the time of the evaluator on the parts that you, are, you already know they are missing. So you want to know, to discover what is really missing. Hmm? Missing by mistake, not by design. OK, so this is the kind of, uh, of information that you get from the evaluators. And as we said at the beginning, you want to have different people check at your design. Uh, this strange uh, image is the result of, a, of an experimental study that Nielsen did when he proposed this uh, discount usability method. And he took a design and he asked 19 different evaluators to check a set of uh, usability problems or to find different usability problems, okay? So you see that uh, the first evaluator, let's say number one here in the bottom, found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten problems. Problem number one was also found by the second evaluator. Problem number one was also found by the third evaluator, not by the fourth, yes, by the fifth, and so on. So each square tells us that a specific problem was found by a specific uh, evaluator. So, and this uh, picture has been sorted with the most, uh, uh, the, with the problems that were found by mo the most number of evaluators on the right. So you'd see the density is on the right. So it means that on the right hand side of this picture, we have the easy problems. Problems that were found by, by most of the evaluators. Once you go left, you find the harder problems problems that were harder to find and only some evaluators found them for example this problem was found only by two people two evaluators out of 19. this problem was found by two evaluators this by four this by five and so on and also evaluators found uh, a different amount of problems there was this lazy evaluator here on top that only found three problems in total and three easy ones mm, i don't pay you for today and uh, others found a much larger number of, of problems but even the evaluator they, they found a lot of problems uh, they missed some so what means that no evaluator by itself will find even the best ones they will not find uh, all the problems and there are some hard hard problems like this one that are found by lazy evaluators you only found four but this one was a hard one mm. so the idea is that if you let the evaluators work independently and then you put together the results you will have a much denser list of problems because you are exploiting these different uh, say points of view of the different evaluators or different skills if they work as a group they tend to find the same issues if they work independently and then you put together the issues you, you will find more issues of course you need to be able to put together issues raised by different uh, evaluators maybe this problem here was uh, number seven in the list of this evaluator and number 14 in the list of the other evaluator in the debriefing session you need to put together all this information and say okay but these two evaluators found these e two issues 
that are actually the same one they relate to the same problem and of course if we mark them by guideline if we mark them by by principle it will be easier to understand that actually they are the same hmm? so it's normal to discover rediscover the easy problems more than once uh, but what we, we want to do is also to find some of the hard problems so what is the best number of uh, evaluators so even Nielsen proposed this uh, chart and this uh, sort of model that says the number of problems that we can find globally of course increases if we increase the number of evaluators statistically now they propose this formula where n is the number of total issues in with which is unknown we don't know uh, how many problems that are really there and uh, l is the probability of finding a problem by a, a given evaluator and so this equation tells us that actually the probability of finding a problem increases with the number of evaluator because it's the conjunction of uh, the you know the complement of this uh, probability one minus the complement is that none of the evaluator will find it even if just one evaluator will find a problem then uh, it will be found you don't find it only if no evaluator will find it so l is the likelihood of finding one problem one minus l is the likelihood that the single evaluator will not find it to the i to the power of i means that the, all the i evaluators will not find it so it's a combined probability so this is the probability that no, no evaluator finds a problem one minus means uh, the probability that the problem is find, found times the number of problems means that the number of potential problems gives you the number of found problems okay it's a simple statistical model that uh, makes a lot of assumptions that are not realistic but at least we, uh, we have an idea so we have a curve like this of course the value of l changes a lot the value of n changes a lot hmm. so but the the shape is more or less like this it's something that asy asymptotically tends to 100 percent we can never be sure that we will reach 100 percent and uh, it's an exponential so once we increase the number of evaluator the difference from the 100 percent is uh, much lower and lower of course the uh, the slope is very much higher at the beginning <coughs> and it becomes flatter and flatter at the end and uh, if we take into account that involving a designer uh, an evaluator costs costs money costs time for this evaluator uh, we can compute the problems found by cost so the cost benefit uh, diagram the benefits is finding more problems the cost is paying more evaluators or involving the time of more evaluators so the, the cost model is like in the in the corner the cost of an evaluation it's a, a, a fixed amount of money of effort organizing the lab setting up the experiments uh, the guidelines the prototype and so on plus uh, the fee the cost the time of each evaluator if you have i evaluators it will be i times time, uh, that, that fee so with this model what the what Nielsen experimented is that in a different range of problems the best point the the level in which you have the most uh, co uh, cost benefit uh, ratio is around three four five evalu evaluators with three four five evaluators you already find uh, 75 percent of the problems with a very limited cost that's why it was discount usability if you have more money this chart tells you that you should not imagine you have money for 10 evaluators you should not involve all of them in the same usability in the same evaluation and find uh, from 75 uh, maybe 82 percent of the problems you could do the evaluation with these five with five people five evaluators then correct those issues and then do another evaluation with the other five that you have in your budget at that point they will find maybe the 70 percent of the remaining problems 
so it's better to iterate small tests small checks rather than involve a large number of testers for the same amount of money of course if the budget is, is infinite you don't have this problem here but usually the best uh, usage of, of the effort budget in often is not just money but it's mostly time the best usage of the budget of the time budget is doing frequent small and frequent checks hmm? so this concludes the evaluation phase so we have the evaluators we know what they do we know how we know how many evaluators should be involved at the end the evaluator should uh, they have the list of the violations found they have to compile this severity rating so prioritize the different issues according to how they are important for our system for the usability of our system uh, actually the severity rating will tell you tell you two information two pieces of, inter of information first uh, which are the most serious problems to fix they will give you a priority and then they will tell you if you really need to invest more on usability so if uh, let's say you have uh, 50 issues and five of them have the top priority top severity okay let's start work on those five but if uh, tw 25 or 30 of them the majority of them have high or top severity then uh, you're not done yet you still you need to actually redesign or think better about usability you need to have uh, to plan additional efforts from the usability point of view it's not just a matter of fixing these problems there's something bigger around and so you need to plan more not fix i fix and then i move to the next step no i will try to fix some of them and then do more evaluation and then uh, so i need more studies so if the number of, of bad, uh, uh, bad issues is, is too high, it means that you need more studies. Hmm? So it will tell you also, it will also give you some process information. The process needs more intermediate steps. Our uh, the severity, as defined by Nielsen, is a combination of three different uh, qualities. The frequency, the impact, and the persistence uh, of a problem frequency means uh, how is how likely it is uh, that the user will uh, encounter the problem so maybe many users will never find the problem because it only happens if your last name has five letters i don't know or it only happens once in a while when you receive a new email uh, at midnight so there are intermittent problems rare problems or common problems that everyone will find will encounter which is similar but it's not quite the same as persistence they can be confused uh, but frequency is actually how likely it is that you find a problem and persistence is how likely it is that you find a problem more than once in the same session so if it's a pop-up that comes up uh, at every page you know there are some websites that you with the web page there's a pop-up you dismiss it you go to the next page the same pop-up will be uh, will appear again and you cannot get rid of it uh, because every every time will be generated so that's a persistent problem that will uh, happen more than once uh, if it's a problem with the login or with the home page it will be perceived by the user every time it, it will log into the system or every time he goes to the home page if it's a problem in the registration process you only do that once so it's a frequent because everybody will have to register but it's not persistent because once you did the, that process it's bad it's had some issues but then you won't see it again <coughs> so it's less important than more frequent ones and then the impact uh, is the effect uh, that the bug that the problem has so the user cannot register because it can't understand how to do that it's uh, it's a very big impact or the user has to click uh, on the you know you have a search uh, you have a table with the results you can you would like to sort the columns of the results in uh, by ascending order or by descending order 
and maybe due to a problem you know you have to click twice so it happens you click once and you give the, the opposite order of what you wanted okay let's click once more okay it's a minor issue should be fixed uh, because uh, the expectation of the sorting order that the user had in mind is different from what the system is doing but it's not such a big issue it doesn't prevent the user from getting the job done it only uh, Im um, impacts uh, the efficiency probably mm -hmm. okay as long as the visibility of the sorting is uh, you uh, you can understand what is the sorting order you understand it's not the, the one you want you can change it so it needs three steps instead of one but it can be done so the combination of these three is combined into a unique score so uh, we have the, the, the we do have the temptation here saying okay let's uh, uh, grade the frequency in scale zero to five and then the impact and then the persistence we have all these numbers and maybe dividing subcategories so we are engineers we have a lot of numbers but then we don't know what to do with these numbers so the idea is uh, uh, the evaluator listed all the issues all the problems all the violations for each violation the evaluator asks uh, himself okay what is the frequency what is the impact what is the persistence of this error and from his understanding of the problem for me experience it gives just one number for the three for the combination of the three from zero to four this is the, the Nielsen suggestion this is scale zero means oh, okay it's not actually a problem when I think about it for a second time it's not really a problem I was just too picky at the beginning so there are some issues that could have a severity zero it may happen you find something that seems a problem when you think about it for a second time is it frequent no does it have any impact no so actually it's not really a problem mm -hmm. and then there are the the grading from one to four of a cosmetic problem to a minor problem to a major problem to a catastrophe mm -hmm. this word catastrophe should be strong enough uh, to tell you this uh, must be fixed now huh? and uh, before doing anything else because the the, the presence of some usability catastrophes uh, in in a way hide many other problems because there's a problem that which is which is so big there's a big impact uh, high frequency and a strong persistence so actually you cannot use the system if the, these problems uh, uh, persist and so all the other problems are very difficult to find because you are constantly fighting against this catastrophe this level four one okay so this is the grading that one evaluator gives uh, to one guideline so imagine a table issue number first second third four guy um, heuristics being violated the principle why this heuristic has been violated so what why severity very simple at the end of two hours or one or two hours of work the evaluator will give you this table hmm? at the end you should combine the severity ratings and there are different theories uh, here somebody says uh, that the evaluators themselves should discuss and come to a consensus okay i give i gave three i gave only two what was better let's discuss hmm? in many cases in other cases we just make the average okay we have three four five evaluators each gave their own number discount usability we don't spend time in trying to reach a real consensus let's make the average if there's one a two and a three and another two and another three 2.5 is okay probably if the problem is uh, if some evaluator gave a, a rate um, a severity of one and another gave a severity of four maybe it's not really the same problem it's split in two so we need to understand so when the distribution of, of severity is not unimodal but it's b-modal for example uh, maybe we need to look into it but maybe in a second stage 
so at the end we have this combined list of issues from the different designers merged together when we we delete the duplicates and uh, when the same issue has been found by more than one uh, evaluator we just combine also the severity ratings and this is the list uh, that we can use during the debriefing stage so the, the fourth stage okay so remember the stage was uh, training evaluation the third one was ranking severity ranking and the last one is uh, debriefing so we started this list right now the evaluator may be with us or may have gone home depends on your process and uh, of course the observers so the people who help the evaluators doing their evaluation should be present because they have information about the comments uh, the notes that the evaluator, uh, the, uh, the evaluator gave during their work and uh, also the members of the development team the members of the development team were kept out from the evaluation process okay you should not be there uh, to try to push the evaluator to find the solution you had in mind but at the end the development team sees all the issues and tries to discuss them at least with the, with the observers and maybe with the evaluators and uh, at this debriefing should take one by one these problems and ask these two simple questions how can we fix it and how much does it cost and at the end uh, this would give you a plan for the next iteration we know what to fix and how something maybe we know how but we decide not to fix it because it costs too much and something okay hopefully we can find a way to fix everything so not it's very it's very bad if you don't know how to fix an issue we can know maybe can, we can know more than one option and these different options will have different costs so we'll select one at this point so from this list of uh, say te very technical list uh, of issues violations and so on we come up with design decisions discussed in the group with this hard uh, evidence in front of us and uh, and of course the most important the most important or the most uh, recurring problems could also be the, the spark for some design discussion oh I, we got it wrong or oh, since there are so many problems with that probably we could try to rethink it so when one why we go forward on so, some part of the system let's stop a while and try to rethink or to redesign another part of the system if we have time hmm. but time is always the enemy because okay mm, we need to close we need to deliver we need to finish the product hmm. always remember that finishing a product too soon is good for the market but if the product is not good uh, it will backfire to you um, do you have any do any of you have a gitlab account not the gitlab on professor Tolkiano machine but the gitlab.com one huh? not the github gitlab uh, last week uh, there was a message from gitlab uh, saying okay we are uh, um, deploying new features uh, the, we are changing the interface we are changing the terms so the user terms and agreements and so on and what we are doing is uh, we will analyze uh, the traffic or the actions of the user on our website uh, to improve to optimize uh, whatever they wanted to optimize uh, and we are doing that also with some external partners so actually we are updating our terms of service uh, and uh, you your data your navigation data on our website will be visible to external companies we decided that hmm. this morning i found an email saying well uh, it was a mistake we are not doing that we a lot of people complained that we can we should not do that we should not take this decision we, if you want to uh, analyze the data let's not sell it or use it or give it to other companies and so on so in that case it was a very simple design decision for i don't know doing some better recommendations i don't know what they had in mind we have a company for we, to which we outsource the algorithm the analysis of the data what's bad with that the fact that uh, so they did it quickly they didn't uh, analyze the consequence of detection and so the users were extremely unhappy uh, with that and right now the, the, ma the mail was closed saying okay right now we are rethinking what we want to do we will 
tell that in advance to the community we will listen to the community we'll take all the time we need to make it right of course it's a marketing sentence doesn't mean anything eh? but this is, should be the mood eh? take your time to do it right it's discount usability this time is not much all of this process one afternoon two hours for the experts two hours for the briefing more or less so it's not a big issue in a project when that could give you more edges uh, when it's launched and that it's uh, full of bug, uh, bugs and full of uh, user complaints and so on. And uh, so that's why now we strive for this heuristic evaluation because it's really fast. <coughs> the results are interpreted by the evaluators. Mm -hmm. So what I was saying at the beginning, the evaluator will always tell you why. And in the why, there's also the suggestion in some way to how to fix it. Uh, if you are doing some user testing uh, we, we don't know the details yet but you are letting users use the system and we you collect the your users are not experts in usability if something is wrong they won't tell you this is wrong they will make mistakes so you need then to analyze the mistakes to understand what was wrong what was the cause of the mistakes so getting data from users it's uh, stronger because the real users always do the, the right thing say in their mind uh, but it's more difficult to analyze to convert the data to a design insight that will tell you what to correct <coughs> and uh, um, in this case uh, we already have some information that has been filtered by the expert so they won't tell you just uh, this button has been uh, wrongly pressed for the 20 uh, 12 percent of the time no they will tell you this but the label of this button is not consistent for example so you know a lot you're you're much closer uh, to correcting the errors rather than just knowing where the user errors are hmm. experts in some cases are too expert too picky they could find problems where actually there, there are no problems and they could they could give you us oh, this is very bad this is very severe maybe it's a problem that in the field would never be um, found will never appear or will, or will not be so bad hmm. uh, after all it's people that are maybe usability professionals so they want to have everything perfect maybe some aspect is not so 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 important in the, the user will, will not notice it huh? but uh, it's a risk of course you need to <laughs> you risk to make your project uh, your system better than what the user would would uh, require would appreciate but okay it's a perfectionism in a way and uh, the worst part of course is that uh, expert expert uh, um, analysis might miss some problems you may have false negatives saying okay this is not a problem where actually problem is there because the users don't have the right background because the uh, the prototype was too approxi ex approximated to uh, show that specific uh, issues and specific behavior that you will, you will only find it with users you will always find more problems with users you cannot catch everything with experts no, that's a rule of nature but at least you can uh, you can you know, throw away the easy ones uh, once uh, or more than once in your process the suggestion is uh, if you have a long process a big system to evaluate try to alternate the methods do some expert evaluation correct the problems do a small user check user test uh, correct the problems do another expert evaluation so that you are you are alternating different methodologies so you are shaking the uh, your your system in two directions every time and so uh, by this alternation of, of techniques uh, you find different problems and so you, you have the best usage of your participants your experts or your users you will be able to extract the most information with this methodology rather than putting everything at the end or making a big usability test or whatever hmm? okay so this is the methodology we know everything to apply it except which are the real heuristics okay which are the rules and um, these rules uh, actually are listed uh, 
in these uh, two pages so uh, what i would suggest to you is uh, uh, we of course try to analyze them next uh, tuesday and maybe we'll try to apply them to some of your submissions so let's try to do something more interactive next tuesday by applying the this guideline to some of the submissions on the in the lab one you know the all of shame uh, ones in particular so if you want a gentle introduction to these guidelines uh, just watch this playlist there are 11 videos 10 videos are from these nice ladies that will tell you one uh, usability uh, heuristic uh, each there are 10 of them and the 11th one is not shown here is by nielsen that will tell you how how good uh, he is uh, with these techniques <laughs> and so it's a there are three video minutes two three vi two, sorry, <laughs> two three minutes videos so in 20 minutes uh, you get you get all of them it's a way that it's not very deep of course it's just an introduction to me in two minutes uh, but they give you the gist uh, of the different techniques if you want to read more this is the page where Nielsen defines uh, the um, techniques but this is something that we will see together in this lesson the next slides are you know examples and uh, explanations of these uh, rules hmm? but in the, in the next week before the next week if you have a look at this playlist uh, at least we can start applying these ideas to our designs instead of just words and words and words okay okay thank you for today and uh, tomorrow you will have to work in the lab read the the description of the lab that we online since yesterday and bring your paper scissors clothes and pens and so hmm? <laughs>